How's it going, Strife here, and this is my updated Warrior build after the February 26th patch. So after the February 26th patch, Lifesteal Food got nerfed. It now has a one second internal cooldown. Because of that, the Axe Axe portion of the Axe Mace build, it isn't as valuable anymore because you'd mainly use Axe 5 to burst heal, which also did damage because every time you healed, you would do roughly 300 damage per Lifesteal. So now I've switched to a Great Sword Axe Mace build. This is going to give you uh, probably the best DPS because you get the burst from 100 Blades and Whirlwind. And then you can still switch to Axe Mace and get the superior auto attacks, the vulnerability stacking, and the interrupt. So I kind of prefer this now. Going over my armor, I'm full Berserker now. If you followed my previous guides, I used to run three pieces of Knights. Once you're comfortable with the class and aren't dying really, you can switch to full berserker and you can see I'm still using four ruby orbs and two monk runes uh, it's just personal preference I like the increased duration on my signet my four great justice and then cuz you're constantly putting out might stacks with great sword uh, the reason I have three of six monk runes is because I had to put one in my breather since I use my helmet you can put it in the shoulders or something it doesn't necessarily matter which slot and then for the weapons, I'm using Sigil of Accuracy in my Greatsword and my Axe, and then Sigil of Bloodlust in my Mace. I do have Battle as well in a second Mace, so you're going to use that when you have 25 Bloodlust stacks already, or you're doing a dungeon where you don't really have time to build up those Bloodlust stacks, something like COF Path 1. Your range, primary range weapon is going to be your Longbow. And then all the other weapons, I kind of just put Sigil of Force in them, because I don't really ever use them except for the shield. The shield you want Sigil of Energy because you're going to equip it when running through harder trash so those extra dodges help. You're also going to equip it when you're meleeing GL in a raw and again those extra dodges are going to help there as well. The stats don't necessarily have reasoning other than I had a bunch of AC tokens so you can get whatever. If I had the choice I'd probably just switch to Berserker but it doesn't matter since I don't ever use them. Then going over to jewelry, so again, all berserker. These are the ascended pieces that I took. And then the earrings, of course, I'm going to go ascended as well. Pretty much anything that comes out that's ascended is going to be berserker. And on the attributes page, so this crit chance is 58% because sigil of accuracy doesn't show up. When you use fury, it's going to go to 78%. When you have the 9% from Height and Focus with 30 Adrenaline stacks, that's going to go to 87%. Putting down a banner is going to give you 91%. And then finally, I still do use Omnomberry Ghosts, so that's going to put you to 95%. It's still the best life steal slash regen food. Um, if you don't need regen in the dungeon, you're going to get more DPS though from going something like the Bowl of Curry Butternut Squash Soup. So it just depends on what you need. As far as traits go, it's a typical DPS warrior build 20, 25, 0, 10, 15. The strength line, you're going to take Berserker's power and Slashing power. You do have the option to take dual wielding as well in the instances where you're going like Axe Mace Longbow for some of the harder fractals where you need to range and then burst in a melee. You also have this minor trait, Building Momentum. That's going to give you an extra dodge every time you eviscerate. So if you do need Endurance, you can pop your eviscerate. For the arms line, you want Rending Strikes and then Forceful Greatsword. Forceful Greatsword is really good. It's going to give you Might every time you crit with no cooldown. It's also is what's going to allow you to use your 100 Blade Whirlwind combo, swap to Axe Mace for 5 seconds, and then swap back and those will be off cooldown. Then you want the extra 5 points for Attack of Opportunity. It synergizes really well with precise strikes. You're always going to have bleeding on and mob, so you're always going to have that 10% extra damage. Then going down to tactics, empowered is what you want most of the time. It gives you 2% more damage per boon, and usually in a guard war mez group, you have 5 boons on you most of the time, so that's 10% more damage, and it can get even as high as like 8 or 9 boons. So that gives you some good burst or extra DPS. Then you also have the option to take inspiring banners and stronger bowstrings as well in the instances where you may need those. Then finally the discipline line, you want heightened focus in dungeons, you do have the option of signet mastery. 
for the cooldown on your rage to get more swiftness duration when you're just running around the overworld map. And then the reason you want 15 is for fast hands. So in my opinion, fast hands is one of the best minor traits in the game across all classes. It's gonna what it's what's going to allow you to get your rotations off for maximum DPS every five seconds. Also, in instances where you need a ranged weapon, you won't be stuck in range for too long or in melee for too long. So that's what allows you to quickly burst in and melee at the appropriate times and then go back to ranged. The other benefit of fast hands is that for things like Sigil of Energy in battle, you get the benefit of having it on only one weapon for the 10 second duration, or 10 second cooldown rather, where other classes would need it on both their main hand and off hand to get that same benefit. So overall this is a really good minor trait. Going to utility skills real quick, so these are the typical three skills for Great Justice, Shake It Off, and a Banner. If you know you won't need condition removal, you can swap out for Frenzy for more DPS. And then in high level fractals or a few bosses, you may want something like Endure Pain or Balance Stance instead of your banner. Uh, balance Stance especially in the Harpy Fractal. So those are situational as well, pretty much all your stances. And then for your heal, you want Healing Surge since this isn't an adrenaline spamming build pretty much always going to have the stage 3 heal. Also Signet, healing Signet's not as good since you don't have Signet Mastery anymore. So that is the heal that you want most of the time. And that is it for the traits. Alright, so I'm out here in Kershaw because I wanted to show you the DPS Warrior rotations to maximize your DPS. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the Whirlwind combo. So normally you're going to do 100 Blades Whirlwind and then you're going to swap to your Axe Mace. You want to swap at the appropriate time because normally if you whirlwind through a mob you're gonna make it way past him so there's all this extra running time which you could mitigate with rush but it's still not gonna maximize your DPS instead what you want to do is you want to whirlwind through the mob and then instantly swap to axe mace to reduce the duration or rather the distance between you and the mob so normally if you are whirlwinding you're gonna make it you know past this plant roughly but if you whirlwind and then you swap to axe mace you're gonna reduce that distance so say this plant is the mob I'll hit the mob and then I'll swap so I don't go all the way over here past the plant I'm a lot closer so I can get my DPS up again if you do get go a bit too far you can use your axe 3 to throw the axe while you're running back so that's what I found is best to maximize your DPS for that instance. Then going over here to the Risen Giant, I'll show you the full uh, DPS rotations in action. So Healing Surge, if you know you won't need it immediately, it's going to max your adrenaline stacks. So usually you want to start, start the fight off with your 100 blade whirlwind rotation, then again you're swapping bursting with your axe mace skills and then swapping back and then you'll see the hundred blade and whirlwind combo is off cooldown again and then you do want to try and finish off the fight with an eviscerate as well just to maximize your dps burst so that's the typical rotation you're going to do you're going to do the hundred blade whirlwind cancel into axe mace use that auto attack and your various vulnerability stacking skills and the knockdown skill if you need it and then immediately swap back to Axe Mace to do the rotation all over again. So hopefully this guide helped you out with um, my new warrior build and how to maximize its DPS. So that is all I have for you and thanks for watching.